This episode originally aired on September 17th, 2021 on the Unethical Patreon. Our client today is Celeste Brown from Unethical Podcast. Go check that out. Nobody can really agree as to what actually happened, but I mean, there's experts that say this is what happened for sure. Fuck the experts. We're right here. I got it. <laughs> what an asshole to be like, it was built in, it was built in Canada, but we made it worse. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, say it's a lot. How's, uh, how's it coming on that boat that I asked you to find the answers to? The boat? You forgot, didn't you? What are you talking about? You never asked me for a boat? I would find shit for you. I'm terrified of you. Good. Okay. Well, what are we talking about here? <laughs> what boat? Richard, what are you talking about? What have you been researching? What have you been researching, Dick? Well, I. I well, you told me to find someone to marry Celeste. So I was like, man, someone to marry Celeste. And then a ghost ship came up. You, ty- spend- you typed that into Google? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I figure stuff out. So uh, I was trying to find someone to marry Celeste. And then I was looking at Jesus the ship. Christ. Is that, is so that Mary the Celeste? talking about? Yeah. No. Yeah. You're not looking. No. Oh. You're not looking for but a husband. Yeah, thanks then. for that vote of confidence that I can't oh. find my own husband. I appreciate that. Well, I'm a wing, I'm a wing dude. I'm a wing dick. I'm pretty good being a wing dick. <laughs> no? All right. Sorry, Celeste. I'll tell you about the ship. I've been doing research. I just did it on my own private time because I thought it was cool. But it's a co- coincidence, perfect. I'll let you know. We'll we'll discuss with the boys and we'll we'll get back to you. Sound good? Don't yell. I'm not yelling. I'm just disappointed. Fine. I'll go over it with the boys and we'll figure out what the best solution is because there's too many solutions to this. I didn't know I was going to be pressured to figure it out today. And this is what Getz does to me. This is all your fault, Rick. Thanks. You're welcome. That's less mad at me. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Oh, fuck. She's disappointed. Is it okay if you give us, let's say, an hour and then I'll call you back? Okay? I don't know what I'm going to do for the next hour. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll glare at him with disappointment while, he, while we, get, we get him to work and then we'll get it all ironed out and report back. You know, I don't say this enough. RJ, you're my favorite. For fuck's sakes. Thank you. Every time. I'm going to put on a little collar and curl up in her lap like a cat. I think I'll just bring my cases to RJ from now on. Since uh, okay. you can't be trusted, Richard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's classic. Um, we're getting a fucking secretary. That's what's happening. I'm getting a goddamn secretary. You're gonna have to, we have a layer of communication between us. We're like Ben Park liquid right now. So I don't have to take shit from you. I don't care if you're disappointed. I care. So Your much. secretary won't protect you. We'll have words about this later. Okay. Well, I'll call you back. Okay. When we're done. Actually, RJ will call you back. Your fucking favorite. I can do that. That's see. Yep. Promise. Yep. See, I can, I can fulfill capacities that are asked of me and, and what is required of me. I want to hear from you again, Dick. There's mysteries to be solved, guys. So if you could just shut up and get to work, please. Goodbye. Also, quick question. Uh, do you understand what the term liquid means? Because I don't think Ben's paid us, so. Yeah, fuck. I thought it meant like we we're owed a bunch of money. And like, because it's it's like, it's not quite in our hands. So running, it's liquid. It's running like through your fingers. I can see fingers. how you would think that, yeah. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's there, though. We know it's there, but it's still running through the fingers. It's not there. But that's what liquid means, right? Yeah. Well, well, you you go ahead and be sure to explain that to the new secretary. An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Like maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover-ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. So Celeste wants us to solve the mystery. Of the ghost ship, the ghost ship, Mary Celeste. We can do that. There is a joke in there. She is correct. I started looking into this because someone was like, somebody should marry Celeste. And I got confused. So that's why I started looking into this. (laughs) But it's another one. We're going back in time again, guys. I I don't know what it is about these mysteries, but everything that exists for mysteries is either like within the last 50 years or in the 1850s. Like, you know what I mean? It's a weird. I've never found one from like the 1600s. I've never found one from like, I don't know. I guess 2020 is not really a mystery yet. You got to give it some time. But yeah, it's just interesting how it always aligns us back in the 1800s, but 18, like mid 1800s, where we're going again today, guys. Well, that's when, that's the last time ghosts actually existed. So yeah. Well, you know what? The the Holy Trinity still exists. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm joking. Hail Satan. I was just saying, no, it doesn't. But... <laughs> it's 
just black when you're gone, baby. Yeah. So I uh, do you guys have you guys ever heard of the Mary Celeste at all? I think so. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't have any extensive knowledge on it, but it's, it rings a bell. There you go. What about you, Getsy boy? Ever heard of this? I did. I did not. But I was really curious about your comment of why do these mysteries not exist. <laughs> and um, I'm sure they do. I just don't like when I go like, no, 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 no. I wasn't researching that. I was trying to figure out why. And I think it was the because a lot of mysteries form when they're like shared publicly, like think about like conspiracy theories now, right? Like they literally just grow and form on Twitter and Reddit. It was because yeah. of the invention of the, the telegraph. That makes sense. A lot of stuff got, a lot more information was passing around and then it was widely, more widely spread. Well, that would make a lot of sense actually. Yeah, because because before that, at least in the United States, I'm sure it happened other places. Newspapers tended to have small circulation and were very expensive. And then over time it got cheaper and cheaper to distribute the information. So it's all about information. Yeah, it was really expensive to have because uh, newspapers are, are bigger than like a traditional like letter. So you need to have like five or six pigeons carry yeah, exactly. it uh, versus, <laughs> just one so i mean and the pigeons are i mean they're getting they're exhausted so they're dying and they're not cheap i mean they don't i for some reason they're just not really easy to breed so yeah. and, and now yeah. all pigeons are dead because of that and all birds are drones mm -hmm. yep <laughs> yeah do you know that actually messenger pigeons are extinct because americans like ate them <laughs> and killed them for sport and fun and eating mm. seriously oh my god i cannot imagine they taste good. i love a real tough bird they probably yeah. taste better than anything we've ever eaten because that's why they ate them all it's one of those things where it's like why would mm. they eat them all they could just make chickens we saw the emu war and we just were proactive with it yeah i'm out <laughs> 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 all right so the mary celeste was built on spencer's island in 1861 spencer's island is on the shores of the bay of fundy in nova scotia canada old mc was built from grade a canadian local timber she had two masts and was rigged as a brigantine now does anybody know what that is what kind of a ship that is all that is all that means is the way the sails were set up along the two masts there's different sail patterns i was getting into it i was like holy fuck i'm not a sailor at all so it's it was a brigantine that's for the fucking sailing nerds out there you're welcome and you're probably going to be like ain't not a brigantine by what you're about to say but i'm sorry i like i said i'm a man of uh, i'm a landlocked man there's nothing i can do about it <laughs> that was a lot of assumptions in a row first off that people <laughs> that into sailing listen to this <laughs> and then what exactly what they were going to say about it when i have a bad feeling about when i write something it ends up being true every fucking time <laughs> like i was right oh, i did an episode about forrest fenn i don't know if you ever heard of this guy but I, it, it's a, this guy hid some fucking treasure in the rocky mountains and like six people died trying to find it it's like five million dollars in gold and illegal shit uh legal like arrowheads and stuff anyways there's people that were obsessed with trying to find this fucking treasure. Uh, it just got found like in 2021, like recently. Oh, wow. Yeah. So people were obsessed. And I, I was like, if I write this episode, I'm going to get fucking lambasted by like the little mistakes I make. And did I get fucking lambasted? I for sure did. So I had the same feeling about the sailors. Mm -hmm. So I'm biting the head off of the fucking beast before it grows too big. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Here comes some more fucking ship knowledge for everyone. I'm sorry if I get this wrong. It was Caravel built. And from what I understand, this just means that the boards were built, fitted together edge to edge rather than the older way where their boards would overlap as they went around. The other way when it was overlapped was called a clinker ship, which I kind of found was cute, a cute name. She was launched on May 18. You notice I'm saying she you're supposed to call a ship a woman. Hmm. Bold of you to assume it's pronouns. This is the 1800s. You were either a, a man or a woman. That's all you got back then uh, or, or dead because you weren't normal. Um, <laughs> mm. she was launched on may 18th 1861 under the name amazon she had nearly 200 ton shipping capacity and was 30 meters long and that's 99 feet for you two morons so now i want to know did did jeff bezos name his company off of this ghost ship no i doubt it because the amazon it gets changed to mary celeste like quite quickly in its career but we'll we'll see maybe like i doubt it i think it's probably more about mythology like amazonians right would it would it be that like the place they live amazon would it be more of that i don't know i don't know about that mm. all right i don't know good good follow-up mystery though why did jeff bezos name it amazon <laughs> i'm sure that's what we're our next someone's calling us to solve that next mm. honor maiden voyage the Amazon was to sail across the Atlantic to London with lumber as cargo. After supervising the ship's loading, the ship's first captain, Robert McClellan, fell ill. The Amazon had to return to Spencer Island when Captain McClellan's illness worsened, 
and he died not long after of pneumonia. John mm. Nutting Parker, Nutting Parker, got a great name, uh, took over as captain of the Amazon and set sail for London once more. Once arriving in Maine, even before attempting to cross the Atlantic, the currently named Amazon ran into some fishing equipment and smashed up some shit out just right away. First sail. After the delivery in London and the ship was leaving, the Amazon ran into another ship in the English Channel and sank that one. So two accidents, one shipment. Mm. Yeah. Not a very maybe not accidents though. Yeah, maybe not. It was probably. I mean, the go, go, yeah, go. maybe they were just like, this ship will not abide by traffic. <laughs> In those cases, do we blame the ship or the person piloting the ship? The person for sure. Okay, but we're blaming the ship because the ship is the highlight here. The people that were running the ship. Yeah, I'm sure Nutting Parker was a moron. Because n- n- Nutting was in the quotes, so he was coming the whole time he was, uh, he was piloting it. And... Yeah, exactly. Uh, good old Nutting Parker. Yeah, he's, he was not a, he's not really good on the highway. He's good at parking and nutting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hold on, let me find a place to park and nut. Wait, was that his full name, Nutting Parker? Was that his first name, Nutting? No, his uh, John Nutting Parker. Oh, John, not Franklin. Okay, sorry, Franklin. To throw you in, just, just establish, to... Rick. Nutting was the nickname because he couldn't stop coming. <laughs> Keep up. Where have you been? We're talking about come here. Pay attention. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. His full name is actually John Nutting Parker Parker Spicer. Okay. Just want to throw that out there. He's got another weird hmm. last name. He's a, they just Spicer. Is it comma Spicer? Was he like a spice salesman? He's like a spice man, a Spicer. I don't know. A fan of the Spice Girls? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's a fan of the Spice Girls. That's got to that be That makes it. the most sense. The Amazon was delivering cargo with three different captains over the next six years. And then in October 1867, the Amazon was accidentally driven ashore during a storm in Cow Bay, Cape Breton Island. At this point, she was so messed up that she was abandoned as wreck. Not long after, the Amazon was bought and fixed up by Richard W. Haynes. He spent nearly $10,000 buying and repairing the ship. In today's money, that's 200000 American dollars. Thank you for the conversion. You're welcome. Because I always hate when it, like 10000 doesn't sound like much. I convert for real. I don't think that I, I know yours, what you said was sarcastic, but I know I was being serious because if you would have said it in Canadian, I would have just been sitting here like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that stack of money must be colorful. All right. After restoration, he made himself the new captain, which you do. So now Captain Haynes also renamed her the Mary Celeste, flying under an American flag before it was a British ship. By late 1869, the ship was repossessed by Haynes collectors or creditors, though. So he took out a little bit too much money in the Mary Celeste. Oops. Oopsie doozy. Uh, between 1869 and 1872, there aren't many records of her trading activities. But in early 1872, the Mary Celeste underwent a major refit. It cost another $10,000 in 1872 money, so another about 200K. This refit gave her another meter of length, toppering her off at 31. Now she's 103 feet, guys, approximately. Also gained some girth. Now she could have a 282-ish, approximately, shipping tonnage. Many other improvements included in the refit, just bigger captain's chambers, just bigger everything. It was just a lot nicer. It was a more modern ship. More room to nut. More room to nut. Nutting's gone, man. He's he's been long gone. It's been years since nutting's been nutting. Uh, you can't you can't keep old nutter down. Yeah, he's probably been nutting. He'll, he'll be back. He's just been nutting on a different ship, you know. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> what year are we currently in? Eighteen seventy-two. Okay. Well, then we're in for a wild fucking ride because Captain Nutting, he drowned in in eighteen sixty-eight, and his ship went missing. Oh, that's amazing. So Nutting's could be a ghost on there too. Oh, what a bad ghost. Yeah, cum ghost. Just <laughs> coming everywhere. Ectoplasm everywhere. Yeah, no, Nutting was only sh- uh, captain for a bit on the Mary Celeste. It, it, like I said, it went through three different captains between this time. So it, that's an interesting story and you should honestly write down because I would like to read more about it. Like I, I'm going to go- and- There's a very, like there's like four or five uh, sentences on a Wikipedia article. I can't find the name of the ship. It just very specifically says- this guy drowned in one of daddy's ships and then the daddy? ship was never heard of again. <laughs> well, it said it's his father's ships, but yeah. Oh, I thought Wikipedia actually said daddy. <laughs> like, I can, I, I mean, I can 
You want me to change it real quick? I'm sure no one checks this one. <laughs> I mean, that'd be fun. I mean, it could just amplifying the sexuality of Mr. Nutter. <laughs> Nutting for daddy. Yeah. Many other improvements were included, and their new owners found a new captain, Benjamin Spooner Briggs. That cannot be his real name. This is a fucking me. Briggs was from a family of seamen. His father and all four brothers were all sailors. His father and one other brother all being captains themselves at some point. Briggs was married and had two children. How are you going to refer to him as Briggs? <laughs> what, what do you want me to call him? Spooner the whole time? Come on. <laughs> Hell yeah, we do. It's literally being spoon fed to okay, you. Okay, well, I'll call him Spooner. I'll try and remember. If I say Briggs, say, just over talk over me and go Spooner. <laughs> It'll be funny. <laughs> yeah, I'll scream Spooner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spooner was married and had two children. He had saved his money over his career and he, him and his brother were going to get out of the sea business and open a hardware shop, but they decided instead to stay on the ocean and buy a share in the Mary Celeste. That being said, he got to choose his crew and he chose his crew with care. Seven people filling the positions with people whom he had worked with in the past and experienced sailors recommended by the other Mary Celeste shareholders. In October 1872, Briggs was to set sail her first voyage since the refit from New York City to Genoa, Italy. Spooner's wife and two-year-old daughter were to sail with him. Their son, Arthur, who was school-aged, seven or eight at the time, remained in New York with his grandparents. Now, on October 20th, 1872, Mary Celeste arrived at Pier 50 in the East River of New York City to load its 1,701 barrels of denatured alcohol. And it's the non-drinking industrial alcohol, Getsy boy. Nothing fun. All right. Not the fuck you up shit. How dare you underestimate Rick like that? <laughs> Thank you for your confidence. I so propanol amigo way back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, nothing says a fun time like some bathtub wine is all I'm saying. By November 7th, the Mary Celeste was on the Atlantic Ocean heading to Italy. All 10 crew members and Spooner at the helm. Over the next few weeks, the ship encountered bad weather. Many of the ship's logs reported winds up to 35 knots. Now, I went to try and explain myself what the fuck a knot is, and I'm not doing it. I'm not a mathematician. I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> you like, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking stupid okay <laughs> on to the next part so one knot oh, is damn. just shy of two kilometers an hour yeah but why change it this is the other thing the sea is so fucked up they're the sea days are a day behind fucking normal days in certain parts of the so, world fuck sea days fuck sea wind fuck the seamen not to be an asshole but if i had to guess <laughs> The measurement of how quickly a boat moves probably came before the measurement of how quickly an on-land vehicle moves. Okay. Prove it. Why don't we just drive in knots then? Why do we have to drive in fucking miles per hour? That's a good question. Exactly. Like, fuck the sea. Maybe because it's such a, like, downer to measure a fucking voyage across the ocean in hours. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going one... St- I don't know. Like what I, I don't I'm trying to think of something that you could like one iceberg every 18 hours. <laughs> like <laughs> that's true. Hey man, whatever. I, I just there's a lot of weird sea shit and I don't need to know it. I'm landlocked. I'm good. At 5 a.m. November 25th was the last time anything was written into the logbook. On December 5th, 1872, the British brig Di Gradia saw the Mary Celeste in the distance around 10 kilometers away, still on the ocean. The Die Gradia's captain, David Morehouse, was surprised to see her still out at sea as he had had dinner with Captain Spooner the night before the Mary Celeste had departed New York. Mm. The Die Gradia hadn't left port until November 15th, eight days after the Mary Celeste. They were 400 nautical miles away from Azores, Portugal, and changed course to see if Briggs and his crew needed any assistance. As he sailed closer and closer to the ship, Captain Morehouse realized that the Mary Celeste had no passengers or crew. The ship's sails were in disarray, some missing completely. The ship was moving erratically and no one was responding to singles. Signals. Captain Morehouse set his first mate, John Wright, on a small ship to investigate the Mary Celeste. Wright found it to be abandoned and confirmed it was actually the uh, Mary Celeste by going to look on the mast. 
uh, but still completely seaworthy. The main hatch was closed. Many others were open, but their covers were placed neatly beside them on the deck. The logbook was found in the first mate's cabin with the final entry, like I said earlier, on the November 25th. That was nine days earlier than when it was found. It recorded their final position, and it was 10 kilometers away from Santa Maria, the easternmost island of Azores, Portugal, close enough to see land, 400 nautical miles from where it was found 10 days later. Now, I, I read on the, I was reading about, like, is that a far distance to go for a ship at that time, just drifting out at sea? And uh, some places were like, that's a really far for that kind of ship. But then a lot of other places were like, that's very reasonable. So I don't know what to say here. So it seems like a reasonable amount of distance for the amount of time it seemed to be abandoned. A reasonable amount of knots. Knots. <laughs> Fucking knots. Nautical miles. God damn it. And this is a trash way of determining speed. What, knots? Yeah. Rick just sent the justification for, for knots. Oh. Yeah, they literally tie a rope with knots in it. And they're like, how many knots did we make it? <laughs> oh, I hate sailors more now. And to um, the sailing community, I'm uh, this is a character. Real Richard's not a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This guy's got jokes. <laughs> Something must have gone wrong between the 25th and the 5th for no more logbook entries to exist. And none of the logbook entries were alarming in any way, minus the bad weather. The ship was stocked with food and fresh water to last six months. The alcohol cargo was still intact, minus eight, nine barrels that were emptied. The crew's belongings were still in their quarters, even though the maps in uh, in the navigational room were all strewn about. The captain's chronometer, sextant, and navigation book were all gone, along with the ship's ownership papers and stuff like that. Important stuff, as if they'd abandoned ship. But being a sailing expert, uh, why is all that stuff important and what is it exactly? (sighs) Chronometers, like a, a, from what I understand, because I'm not a fucking sailor, it's basically a timepiece of the time. So it's to ch- ah. check what time it is. Sextant, fuck if I know. It's that little stick thing. Put it in your butt. Yes. Sextant. It's like, uh, like I know what it is. I just don't understand what it does. Angle between horizon and celestial body of the sun, moon, and stars. Sextant. Yes, a sextant. It's a sextant. It's a fucking tent. They all have sex in. I give up with you, RJ. I'm fine. <laughs> the only thing missing off the ship was a singular long ship, which is basically their lifeboat of the time. Well, and and a pen, probably. That's probably why they stopped writing in the logbook. Well, yeah, the pen, the pen was went over. I'm lying. The only other thing, because they took they did take the sextant and the chronometer and all that other stuff that was important, plus the long ship. Uh, the pen, I'm sure, was missing as well because it was probably with the papers. This mm. also this suggests that they left in an orderly manner. They weren't thrown off or anything like that. The derelict Mary Celeste was then claimed by Captain Morehouse and taken 600 nautical miles to Gilbreter, 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 a British colony off the coast of Spain. The mystery we need to solve here is what happened to the, the crew that day. But for us to actually be able to figure out what happened to that crew, there's a lot more that happened later on after this. So I'm just going to go through the whole history of the Mary Celeste, and then we'll go back to this mystery. So just remember, we're trying to figure out what happened, why it was abandoned. All right? So. Okay, when you say Portugal, are, like which direction out 400 nautical miles am I looking? Because Portugal is the one that is like right on the edge, right? So I could go 400 like. 400 nautical miles away from Azores, Portugal. Azores. Azores. I think that's what that is. A-Z. 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 O-R-E-S. Azores. Wait, how many people were on this ship? Ten. That's a low. So did they come originally from mainland Portugal? So is the assumption is the assumption that they were 400 nautical miles in the direction of Portugal from the island of Azores? Yeah, it's a, it's a big dip. It's it's closer to Gilbreter. Like it's at the top part of Portugal and Gilbreter or whatever is at the bottom part of Portugal or Spain, sorry. It's a, like a long it's along the coast, man. I don't know. It's not I'm not a fucking geometrist. <laughs> that almost works cuz you wouldn't know what shape the thing is. <laughs> What do you mean almost? Of course it works. I'm genius. I said that earlier, right? I'm following. I'm following. So they're they're basically right in the middle of this Azores Island and Port- and like Lisbon. Yes, it drifted off. It's not where it should be when it was found. For us to make any decisions to what happened here, we need to know what happened after this day. So the salvage hearing 
was held on December 17th, 1872 to see if the Die Gradia crewmen were entitled to the settlement from the ship's insurers. Under maritime law, the salver uh, could expect a substantial payment on the value of the cargo and the ship, depending on the dangers associated with the salvage of the ship. The attorney general in the hearing, Frederick Solly Flood, suspected foul play and investigated accordingly. After three months, there was no concrete evidence of foul play, however, and the salvagers received one-fifth of the value of the ship and its cargo. Mid-March, a new crew was raised for the Mary Celeste and it headed to Genoa to finish its delivery. The rest of the Mary Celeste's career of losing money, cargoing merchant goods over the Indian Ocean, and even more captains falling ill kept the idea of the ship being cursed. A group of Boston shippers, along with the Mary Celeste's current captain, Gilman C. Parker, conspired to fill the Mary Celeste with nearly worthless cargo and insuring it for over, so they insured it for basically a million dollars. And then they were going to purposely run the ship into a very well-charted coral reef near the Port-au-Prince in Haiti. This ripped the bottom out of the Mary Celeste and left her beyond repair. Parker sold her as salvage for $500 and waited for the insurance to pay off. Unfortunately, the insurance didn't pay off because they caught Parker and the shippers in their scheme. Uh, They were all tried for conspiracy to commit insurance fraud with an additional charge for Parker, who was charged with baritry. And baritry is, do you know what that is? Does anybody know what baritry is? No, that's a new one for me. It's the willful casting away of a ship. And during its time, it had a death penalty attached to it. The death penalty? Correct. (laughs) So if you were to run death. Yeah. Jesus Christ. This is a time. Fuck the 1800s, dude. That is some bullshit. People were marrying children and (laughs) fucking their cousins and getting put to death for abandoning a ship. Not abandoning, running it aground. Willfully casting it away. So Portugal was not kosher with the whole Viking burial thing then. Yeah, probably not. What are they going to give them the fucking death penalty for being (laughs) dead? (laughs) You get the death penalty. (laughs) That would be sick if they just like did like a public hanging of a bunch of dead bodies. Well, that's why they shoot the arrows, the lit on fire arrows, because they've been sentenced to death again. Hmm. So yeah, the jury couldn't come to a verdict with the conspiracy charges, so the judge ordered the shippers to pay back what they owed or won from the crashing of the old Mary Celeste instead of having to have another expensive trial. Parker's barristry charge was deferred, but Parker's professional career and reputation was ruined. He died three months later in poverty. Nothing to his name. The Mary Celeste uh, remained in the reef to rot never giving a sufficient answer to what happened to the crew of the Mary Celeste that one fateful voyage. So there's a bunch of theories on this one and it might encapsulate a few extra things. So what do you guys have for theories so far? If you got anything, let's hear what you got. Could you imagine being an insurance investigator in 1884 and being successful in catching these motherfuckers? You don't have to imagine you can play it. It's called uh... Tale of the Oberdin is a first person narrative driven puzzle game. And it basically <laughs> is about figuring out as an insurance investigator, I shit you not, probably the only video game in which the lead character is an insurance investigator. Uh, and you you go through the ship trying to determine where the fuck everybody went and what happened. This is and uh <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a very very interesting game. I didn't I could not figure out the the loop in it, so I I ceased playing it before I finished it. But it is wildly fascinating. Like, is it fun? I don't even know if I should pick it, it up. It is. It's a it's a puzzle game, and it's got like really interesting visuals. They're like uh they're mapped in like um it's supposed to mimic that text art where you know everything's like uh you make like images out of like text. So is that what happened back then? Did they just bring the insurance adjusters some puzzles? And if you figured out the puzzles, they lost their insurance claim? Well, you said that dude had a chronometer or whatever, (laughs) and the dude in this game has a magic watch. So Same thing. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I can't. uh, To answer your question, Rick, that is something I kept thinking about because there's a lot of like, there's a lot more talk about the insurance guy. Fuck, man. 
selling insurance to boats must have fucking sucked. <laughs> like <laughs> that must have been like, yeah. How do you collect premiums? Like I know Geico <laughs> will send me like 30 emails if I'm like one day late. So yeah. I don't think they could do that at the time. <laughs> They're just pigeons slamming against the windows. <laughs> like pay your fucking bills. Yeah. They must have had some fucking pretty big goons. Mafia type fucking people. Oh, that would be sick. Like I'm an insurance investigator. Like, and everyone knows what that means. It means you break hands. So hearing what you heard so far, do you have any guesses of what uh, some theories might be? I'm going with the pen thing. Uh, they all went <laughs> overboard after somebody dropped it. Just like one after another. Like, well, we can't let the logbook go empty. So like over nine days, they just kept falling off trying to get the pen and not coming back up. They'd wait like an hour and be like, he's not coming back. Okay. Someone else has to go. You know what, though? So. The, as ridiculous as that sounds, there's a theory that's not exactly that, but like along the same vein, you're going to die. Oh, okay. All right. I'm excited. Okay. What do you, what do you got anything get so far? Just off of what you've heard so far? I'm thinking this is just people trying to be really complicated pirates. I think they forced them off the ship and then brought them back. I, I think it's too convenient that this same guy who got one fifth of the cut decides, I'm going to try and run this fucking ship into. Uh, an island or something that uh, doesn't no, no that's years later dude that's like oh that's not the same dude no no no. it's years later after the mary celeste has been sold but and, and... i'm still i'm still calling it the same thing i think i think it you know shady ship is a shady ship okay okay so let's go through a couple of the theories here and then if you want to revise your ideas let me know so theory number one captain briggs or captain spooner is a moron <laughs> Captain Spooner thought the ship was taking on too much water and was going to sink. One of the pumps was disassembled on the deck. And since the ship was just refitted and the last shipment before the refit was of coal, it's believed to have been clogged with both of those two things, Mm -hmm. dust and coal dust. Also, the sounding rod was on deck. Now, if the sounding rod was on deck, that infers that it was recently used. Now, the sounding rod is a tool used to measure water in the ship's hull. You dip it into the water till you hit the bottom, pull it up, see how much water you've taken on. Now, I'm glad it's that because when I looked up sounding rod on the internet, oh, it's yeah. the thing you stuff in your pee hole to hit the prostate from the front. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad it was that. I was about to jump all over that. I'm glad you, you already were. <laughs> the sounding rod readings were high or misreading for some reason. The cargo uh, was too filled in the bottom of the hull to check waters visually. So with the broken pump, Captain Briggs may have thought that they were going to sink. Uh, So when they thought they were going to sink, Captain Briggs gathered all his papers from the ship, his navigational tools, loaded the lifeboat and sailed off into the distance to hopefully be saved or make it to land because they were supposedly 10 kilometers from land or 10 nautical miles or whatever the fuck it is. There's a few problems with this theory, though. Uh, If you had enough time to bring your navigational tools, why not bring other things? Captain Briggs is also an experienced seaman. Sorry. Captain Spooner was an experienced seaman. So is Captain Nutting. Yeah, <laughs> there's all sorts of seamen all over the face of the story. Judging by the condition of the ship, there's no way he would have thought that they were in mortal danger. Mortal enough to brave the Atlantic in a lifeboat in December weather. That's a bad idea now, never mind the mid-1800s. That's Captain Briggs a moron. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, I, I don't think so either because, I mean, you couldn't be stupid enough to not leave a note. Right. Unless, of course, <laughs> the only pen on board. Mm. You're really fixated on the, pen. the only pen on board was missing. All right. Another theory is theory number two. Drugs are good. There's a theory out there that the crew is pa- wasn't panicking for nothing. They were hallucinating. Now, apparently there's a fungus uh, that could have infected the bread aboard the ship. It's called caviceps purpurea or ergot i I said that wrong for sure caviceps purpurea or ergot this is somewhat common to happen in seafaring days and the fungus could have caused them to panic during unexpected hallucinations so surely if spooner wasn't his right mind he wouldn't have jumped ship like that but maybe if he was hallucinating and a little bit scared he would have thought it was the best idea for everyone and they would have known that they were hallucinating It would have just happened, right? Because they weren't doing this on purpose. Hmm. They were accidentally dosing themselves with this fungi. Yeah, but I don't feel that 10 people could have a collective hallucination. 
No, but you could see that the ship's taking on too much water with a broken uh, sounding rod. And then everyone sees that and everyone goes, oh, my God, we're all going to sink. And then they go into a panic, grab the lifeboat, chuck it in the water, grab as much shit as they can hand carry at the time and sail out into the distance. Now, mm. there's only one big major problem with this one in my book is that the Digradia, they took basically all the food stores from the ship and none of them experience any hallucinations or problems at all so they're eating the same food i don't think that's really what happened but it's a fun theory drugs are cool yeah what do you got you got anything for that gets i saw you look up the fun guy no no but i think i think i have a new theory but i have a lot of questions to go with it so i'll let you finish sure so theory number three mutiny now, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's first literary success was anonymously writing about the Mary Celeste in a story entitled J. Haber Habakkuk Jeffson's Statement, published in the 1884 January edition of the Cornhill Magazine. He wrote that there were passengers on the ship that conspired to commandeer the ship, sail it to Africa, and kill all the passengers and crew. Full disclosure, right off the top, I'm going to let you guys know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle said it was a black guy. He just blamed a black guy damn yeah uh <laughs> sir arthur conan doyle is the same guy that wrote sherlock holmes he's very known for being racist yes i didn't know that that's uh not i mean it's not it doesn't disappoint me it's not like he was my hero or something but man they're all racist well it's the times right like i'm sorry i'm not excusing it i'm just saying like it was more normal and i don't agree with it but it is what it is i guess but sherlock holmes doesn't have to be everywhere still no, for sure. And we've had we've had our fill. Benedict Cumberbatch finished it. It's over. We don't need to do it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah the last episode where he says the N word was let's was not powerful. <laughs> let's not go crazy with it. All right. There's some really good Sherlock Holmes adaptations. All right. Fine. You can we can agree to disagree on that. I, I'm you know what I like Sherlock Holmes. It's fun too. He does directions. Shit. He's cool. All right. So only one crewmate survived and sailed back to Portugal. Or wait. Yeah. Okay. So only one crewmate sailed back to Portugal after the whole mutiny thing. Uh, the problem is this was a fiction written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. People were invented. Events were exaggerated, if not outright made up to make the story sound more interesting. Uh, but the short story was so detailed and plausible that the story was believed at the time. Uh, the Cornhill magazine was demanded by the U S consulate Horatio J Sprague to investigate who had written the article. So <laughs> they, it was so believable. They got the ears up of the authorities. Doyle loved the attention it garnered during the investigation for the insurance claims. There were found to be signs of battle on the ship by the investigator, our buddy, AG flood, the sword found in the captain's chambers had a Brown blood like stain. It had on, uh, sorry, it had a blood stain on it. Once unsheathed AG flood discovered that one of the ship's rails looked to have had blood on it as well, alongside a gash that looked like it may have come from an ax. The ship's bow also had markings as if it had been either run into by another ship or run aground. Ultimately, there was no real proof of this battle, though, but there were nine empty barrels of alcohol that were empty. And some theories say that the crew just drank that alcohol, got hammered and mutinied against their captain. And he was a well-known God-fearing Jesus man, uh, Spooner was. So maybe he was boring and they just fucked this guy. They got all hammered. Mm -hmm. Took it over they would die from drinking that shit though right or is this a different alcohol oh no that's the alcohol they there's a theory out there that they just drank that alcohol which if you're big enough Ooh. alcoholics you can do it apparently i don't know really i figured you'd go blind shit yourself and then just die no, apparently if you have enough if you have enough of a tolerance to alcohol you can drink like isopropanol you can drink fucking perfume you can drink all that shit uh in moderation nine barrels Damn. is a lot of fucking booze so well, how many people are on the ship it. though ten I mean, one of, one of them a toddler, one of them a Jesus freak and his wife, seven ship people, basically. The wife can drink. Yeah, I, I, I'm i going to say that they're very uh, Christian people. I, I, They might be hammered all the time. I don't know. I don't know that. I have this conjecture. Didn't they drink wine like Sonny D? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Maybe. Maybe. I, I doubt it, though. I, I, The whole mutiny thing was kind of disproven in the insurance claim. They said it could have been like wear and tear on the ship. All that stuff was like natural cracking and natural fractures on the front of the bow from the refit. So I doubt it. Maybe there was mutiny. I do like the fact that everyone just believes the first story they hear, though. That is my favorite part about uh, the old timey things. You print something in the newspaper and I was like, fact, fact. 
cool. <laughs> Black guy did it, of course. We never do that anymore. Yeah, no, never. No, even if they print the truth, someone just goes, it's not real. And everyone goes, you're right, it's not real. Yeah, that's the opposite. <laughs> All right, so the next theory. Water sprout or other weather phenomenon. So besides Captain Spooner being a moron, what else do you think could have taken on, made the ship take on too, too much water? There might be a natural phenomenon they call a water sprout. Now, it's like a tornado in big bodies of water, a water tornado, as they say. They don't really pull up water per se, but if the ship was mid-water sprout while testing with the sounding rod, it may have given a false reading. With the ship at capacity, it would be hard to go down and check the cargo, like I said earlier. So these false readings may have caused Briggs to uh, make everyone abandon ship in the Atlantic, sealing their fate. Tidal waves and sea quakes have been proposed, the same result. Uh, they got, took a bond, a big wave, think, thought they got more water in the ship than they actually did. Or they sea quakes just basically like it makes another tidal wave, another type of wave tidal wave. Now there's a bunch of problems with this theory as well. Nothing seemed like it took on that much, like a fucking everything would have been ruined, right? All the papers and stuff, all the navigational shit would have been all soaked to death. It was everything was still dry. There was barely any water actually on the ship. Like, yes, there was more than what typically would be in, in a ship, but nothing, like I said, nothing, to, it was completely seaworthy the ship. So for them to have hit a tidal wave or something like that, the, the water sprout's the more likely one because it just would have the mist and it would have been on the sounding rod. So it would have looked like it, but still very unlikely. Captain Spooner would have seen these things in the past. He wouldn't have just, you know what I mean? Like he would have, he would have known mm -hmm. to not worry about that, but that coupled with the, the broken pump, who knows? Maybe he just, he had a, he had a toddler on the ship, right? So maybe he was just being extra cautious, get off the ship, you know, we'll save, save the kid, but terrible idea. Who knows? I don't think that one's true. That one doesn't hold water. I see what you did there. Mm. This is another one that's fun. Giant squid slash supernatural. Fuck yeah. That's the one. So the publication, the Chambers Journal of September 17th, 1904, claims that each and every member of the Mary Celeste were picked off one by one by a giant tentacled creature, whether it be squid or octopus. The giant squid actually has been known to attack ships in the sea uh, it has tentacles that can be up to four to five meters long that's 15 feet guys and they've been known to uh like i said attack ships problems with this theory are that the captain's papers sextant cr chronometer and all that stuff was nicely taken away what did the fucking squid put its tentacle down grab all the they love they love treasure yeah yeah it could be could be. Everyone knows that. They gnaw on it with their little beaks. <laughs> they're, they're dragons of the sea? Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Dragons of the yeah, ocean? Yeah, they, they hoard it at the bottom. I mean, what do you think happened to Ariel? She got got by a squid, dude. That's true. That's why you don't hear about her no more. But they printed this in the paper, too. So, uh, wow. In, nice. In all seriousness, that that's funny that that was actually an option in 1904. I love it. There's also been other supernatural things associated with like they drove through the Bermuda Triangle and got sucked into that, but they didn't even they would have never come close to the Bermuda Triangle. So that's not true. I was going to say, what did the location of the Bermuda Triangle change? Exactly. Yeah. No, they would have. <laughs> they, but people want to tell and say it's the Bermuda Triangle. And there's also they say they're all abducted by aliens because in every conspiracy type thing, there has to be aliens. Next theory. This is the one that I was saying was kind of similar to your pen theory. Accident and sharks. So in 1913, the diary of Abel Foss Dick was found in it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Foss Dick. F-O-S-D-Y-K. <laughs> Abel Foss Dick. <laughs> what is with these goddamn names? They're amazing, right? <laughs> Everyone associated with this. But like J, J. Bartholomew Cock Gobbler. <laughs> Unreal. All right. In the diary, Fostick claimed to have secretly smuggled himself into the cargo of the Mary Celeste to escape police in America. While he was in hiding, holding onto the side of the ship, no less, he explained what he observed on that fateful voyage. Fostick says that Captain Spooner told the crew he could swim with his clothes on. What an outrageous assertion. Surely no one could do that. So apparently... Mm. The whole crew came out to watch this feat on a homemade piece of staging that hung over the edge of the uh, ship. While everyone was on the staging, it collapsed, toddler and all. While trying to get back, <laughs> while trying to get back on the ship, 
Starving sharks came and took out the entire crew. Fostick claimed to have jumped, uh, jumped off to swim to the coast of Africa. No one thinks this is true. Uh, <laughs> they literally said this is the 19, uh, early 1900s version of fake news to sell a few extra newspapers at the time. Yeah, the, the uh, Arthur Conan Doyle thing and the squid really had him flying <laughs> off the shelves. They were like, we need something else. Yeah, let's let's make it so and not yeah, like the captain said he could swim with his clothes on. I can't believe it. I've never. <laughs> well, I mean, their clothes back then were made out of like eight pound wool, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, but I'm sh- like, come on, man. The, probably like <laughs> soaked up like a fucking diaper. Yeah, he just comes out like the Michelin man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so that that part alone might not be that unbelievable. They'd be like, you're insane. man! <laughs> You'll sink immediately. Yeah. I just I, I like the story, so I had to put it in. No, that was yeah. great. Fostic theory number whatever we're up to now. Pirates, a.k.a. the Die Gratia. Now, there's theory about the Mary Celeste ran into the, uh, true blue pirates, raided, killed, blah, blah, blah. That old fucking story. OK. But A.G. Flood's main theory was that the Die Gratia doesn't deserve the salvage insurance because he thought that the Die Gratia killed and robbed the Mary Celeste. He thought the Mary Celeste was overinsured, and Captain Spooner told Morehouse that they were overinsured on their last dinner together the night before the Mary Celeste shipped off from New York. Then Morehouse left port eight days after Briggs, sailed as fast as he could, caught up to the Mary Celeste, then they kill everyone on the ship, including the infant, take the ship for salvage. I have to remind people there's a fucking infant on this because all this seems a little crazy to me. Like people, but it, I mean, it's this high seas, man. This explains the scratches and battle marks on the outside of the ship on the bow and why Morehouse explanation of why the salvage was so unbelievably easy. There's a few problems with this theory, though. The Mary Celeste was a much faster ship and it would have reached Italy way before the Die Gradia caught up to him. So some accounts changed the theory to say that the three of the Mary Celeste new crew members were cutthroats that worked for Morehouse and they killed the uh, crew of the Mary Celeste even before it hit the sea. And then they brought it out to sea, met up with the Die Gradia a couple days later, ready to salvage. Now this doesn't explain the ship's logs. So then they changed their theory even further. They say that the cutthroats didn't kill everyone at port. They waited till November 25th. And then they killed everyone, waited for some, the Die Gradia to show up and go like, oh, whoa, it's abandoned. <laughs> this, there's another problem with this, though. There's no evidence at all that the ship was overinsured. It had the proper amount of insurance. And it also, if you figure if the Die Gradia was pirating, they'd be taking everything. They would just be taking, like, the ship's logs and shit. Like, why would they do that? Right? They would take all the alcohol. Yeah. They would take all the food. They would take everything and then say, oh, look what we found, a ship. It must have been those pesky pirates, but maybe, right? Maybe that's their sneaky way of getting around that. We're not pirates. See, everything's there. Some say Morehouse and Briggs could have planned this together, but Morehouse double-crossed the Jesus-loving Briggs last minute. Ultimately, the damage to the ship was determined to be normal wear and tear, like I said earlier, and Morehouse and his Del Gradia got their money. One-fifth, like I mentioned earlier. Now, this makes... Uh, people think that flood and the court thought that die gradia was uh, shady, but they just couldn't prove it. So they just gave them less what they deserved. To me, this is, I'm not sure it's between this one and the next one. So I, I, I think this might be what the, what happened in a way. We'll move on to the next thing. It doesn't explain the, the nine barrels being empty of alcohol. All right. It doesn't, doesn't explain a couple things, but it, it's the most makes the most sense so far. It does. Uh, it's got more connective tissue than anything else, but it's still like miss. You know what I mean? It, I don't know. Yeah. There's two. It, nothing really is adequate to explain it. Yeah. Other than, you know. Yeah. No. Uh. Like for sure. All right. There's one more theory here, and then I'll get. I'll. I can see Getz mm-hmm. just boiling up up there, just trying to figure out what the fuck happened. So last theory. Yeah, he figured it out 56 minutes yeah, yeah. ago. <laughs> He's been, been waiting to like, shut up, Richard. Yeah. Here's what happened. All right. Chewing a hole in yeah. his tongue. Theory, last theory of the day, I believe. Uh, uh, theory number whatever. Alcohol, the cause of and solution to all life's problems. There's actually two alcohol-based theories here for you, Getsy boy. Uh, first alcohol theory, the threat of imminent death. 
Now, there might have been a spill of the alcohol and Captain Briggs could smell the fumes. Uh, interesting that the nine empty barrels were the only barrels made from red oak. Now, red oak is known to be very porous and doesn't keep in vapors. So after finding out one of his pumps was busted, probably from the contraction of the load, coal, whatever, the coal, or the construction in the coal. We already know why. It's broken. Uh, the pump's broken. He thought that an explosion was imminent because he couldn't get rid of the alcohol that had leaked out, he had thought, because of the smell. Uh, having his what baby and wife on board, like I said earlier, Captain Briggs called to abandon the ship prematurely. Everyone evacuates on a lifeboat. They lose their life somehow and die on a lifeboat. Uh, maybe they just got off. Maybe they got off with a rope on the lifeboat. Wait till the fumes pass. So nothing explodes in their face or something like that. And they let go of the rope and they just die in the open ocean. Who the fuck knows? Now, there's theory number two, which is the explosion theory. Now, the explosion theory has been brushed off for years because there wasn't any signs of fire on the ship. Until 2005. Dr. Andrea Sella. Sorry, her name's not like cum face. My fault. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Andrea Sella from University College London Chemistry Department thinks she and her team solved the mystery. She thinks it was an explosion that sealed the fate of the Mary Celeste and its crew on that notorious mission. Uh, and she simulated the explosion in an experiment using butane as a substitute for leaking alcohol. And instead of barrels, she used cubes of paper to simulate the barrels. When sparked, a huge blast of flame, which set a ball of flame upwards. You figure the paper cubes would show signs of fire or scorching. Turns out that the explosion was pressurized, making a huge flame, but not leaving any soot or anything behind. The nine empty alcohol barrels could have been plenty enough to cause the same type of explosion. Now, a spark from two barrels rubbing together because they were loose at the bottom of the ship what would have been enough to spark the explosion. Maybe someone who was smoking a pipe uh, recklessly. Uh, this could have blown the hatches open and terrified everyone on board, including Briggs. Like I said, he had his kid. So when he saw an explosion, smelt the alcohol, then he had a reason to actually get off the fucking ship, took all his stuff, sailed away. Maybe had a, I'm, I'm guessing he had a tow rope. He actually, they actually let go. Something bad happened with that. And they just died in the Atlantic. I don't know about this lady with her experiments, but I feel like something to do with the alcohol has to be a part of it. No, that all tracks. That's the only that look, that's the only other theory other than my brilliant one <laughs> that explains why they wouldn't have left a fucking note. So, OK, uh, so Getsy boy, what do you got here, buddy? I can see you just I don't doing. buy the explosion thing because didn't you say that the barrels were found empty? No one said that they were like found exploded. Yeah, it would have been the fumes that would have exploded. Because the, the red oak is very porous, so it would have fumed up. They think that, that it uh, just leaked out through the pores of... It didn't actually have holes in them. It didn't explode in the barrels. But enough enough explosion to create a force, whether or not it made anything burn, would have been enough force to blow the, the containers that they were in apart, would it not? For sure. Well, not if it happened, uh, because if it was like... So think about it like if you like leave your stove on, you know, like everybody does. Right. Um, Mine's on right now. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. That's you just keeping the house warm. Yeah. Well, you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, fumes to fall asleep yeah. too. Um, no, nah, like, and then if you light it, it's just like it goes up real quick. But like, you know what I mean? So like, if it was a pressurized thing, and I mean, I'm, I'm not a physicist, uh, but it seems likely to me that like a sufficient like you know expansion or contraction or whatever, like Richard said, it would blow hatches off. But because it's just fumes, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the actual casks fucking exploded. That now, there's the, the thing with the hatches is the only thing that kind of like throws me a loop with this one, because this lady's a very smart lady. All right. Uh, smarter than me. I OK, there's a couple things. The paper matching up with the barrel texture and this explosion does that match up should there a paper has more uh like it has more elasticity so it wouldn't explode like rick is saying right it would you feel like it would be a little less so maybe that there's something to be said there but also with the hatches they're said to have the hatches were said to be off and beside the hole the porthole so if they would have blown off they wouldn't be sitting there perfectly waiting right beside the hole. So that was where my major uh, problem with that theory is, is that the hatch is kind of like should be blown off on the side of the ocean or something, not just unless there's extra ones. I don't know anything about ships. So maybe there's a secondary fucking hatch if it does blow. No, up. It could be, but maybe could have, I mean, this is far fetched, but they could have like, just kind of like, boom. 
And yeah. Then, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. And then maybe people thought they were just set there yeah. when in reality, they just kind of like came off. Cause I mean, it's not like they have pictures of what they looked like, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm torn between the die gradia, just fucking robbing them and this explosion scaring Morehouse off the ship. I don't really know which one's which. I am not sure because they both to me sound like, like the guy had dinner with him days before and he's the one who runs into him on the, sh- on the ocean, like eight days later. Come on. This is not, these are shipping lines. These are, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I yeah. feel like there'd be lots of other ships in eight days. One, at least one that would have passed it and like investigated, but it has to be the guy that he had dinner with the day before he left. I don't know, man. There's a lot to that to me. Maybe there was something on there that, that nobody knows about. Oh, but maybe when they had dinner, he he let something slip. Could be, could be. Uh, these these yeah. merchant ships are like it, it's it's a weird time in history with all this like yeah. shipment like that. Like now we just put stuff on the back of like semis and send them across the fucking North America, and shit gets from point A to point B pretty quick. But back then, you had to take like yep. months to get stuff and you had to have a crew of at least 10 guys on this size of ship anyway just to get or a crew of eight i guess including the captain right um right it's just a different time i bet you there was a yeah. lot of thievery and fucking pirates they said there was lots of pirates yeah because i mean i'm sure he had something he could have had something illegal on there yeah oh yeah you know it's not like it would be in the manifest you know so then he's getting he's getting drunk at dinner with this guy and he's like good god man if you've ever seen a pen so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you coming with the pen that time, you jackass. <laughs> I, I got you guys like interesting. Tell me more. Or or maybe those nine barrels, the reason they're red oak, they weren't actually denatured denatured alcohol, and there was something else more valuable inside of them. Oh, true. Right. Because they were open, they were, right? They, they were, were empty, empty right? Correct. So maybe they weren't even yeah. alcohol in there, and that's why they were red oak. Because you figure, why would only those nine mm. be red oak if they know it's porous? Maybe I I didn't even think right. of that as, a, as an option. Maybe the Diagradia knew something because they were friends and whatever was in like what's liquid that's worth a lot in 1862 or 1872. I don't fucking know. Right. Or it wasn't liquid as to throw people right. off, and there was even more pens in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was the first. It was the first ever run of Bix. <laughs> Those things are worth millions yeah. now. Yeah. They're called ballpoint, <laughs> and they're gonna make us a fortune. You see this. It lasts for days. You don't have to dip your your pen in the will, quill at all. Feathers? That's your father's pen. <laughs> fuck that noise, pal. It's like me trying to explain a smartphone to my mom. Like, just fucking stop taking <laughs> notes and record it on your phone. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what do you got, Getz? You're being very quiet at this point. No, I, I'm still. You know, I'm I'm still in the camp that it was a. Uh very smart insurance slash pirate scam and they were just trying to double triple dip on their their robbery i don't have, i don't have anything too crazy i just i thought whoever did that experiment is full of shit when it comes to the explosion what don't yeah. dog my girl andrea like that i thought that was clever have we thought maybe this is like the dog bridge and none of it ever fucking happened? There's too many people who have dick references to their name. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Maybe the whole fucking thing was an Arthur Conan Doyle story. <laughs> this right now we're yeah. living in an Arthur Conan Doyle story. All right. But uh, no, there's too much actual like their shipping records going back to like the f- late 1600s in Britain and America, like they all over the place. So it's well traced. This ship existed. They think they found it recently, which is kind of fun. They found like some boards, but they mm. tested the boards and they're fr- they were from uh, Texas or some shit like that. Somewhere in the States, not from Nor- Nova Scotia. So then they debunked that. But I mean, they're still looking for it. They know it existed. It was a real ship. It did a lot of fucking. Shit. Well, maybe they just found the good part of the ship. <laughs> American. The, the refit, the yeah. refit part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I don't know. What are we going to consent on? I, I, I'm in the middle, so convince me either way, boys. You go with Explosion, uh, RJ, and you got uh, Diagradia. Convince me. Then I'll, I'll make the decision on this, and I'll tell Celeste. Or you got to tell Celeste, RJ. All right. Uh, okay, imagine you're in charge of the most beautiful, mostly American ship <laughs> ever made. Okay? And your job is to make sure the logs are kept. All right? And then... Some fuckface, the quartermaster, whoever it is, only requisitions one goddamn pen. All right. 
And then on November 25th, all right, after a uh, uh, hearty meal of cheese, bread, and lime peels or whatever the fuck <laughs> you eat out there, your your greasy fingers, you, you the pen slips out and goes overboard. So what do you do as captain? You make every single crew member of that ship go overboard to get that pen because it's your job to maintain the logs. And when they don't come back, you send another one in. (laughs) And then eventually you're going to be down to just your wife and your baby and babies float. So you toss that fucker in (laughs) nothing. So you kick your wife in nothing. And then it's up to you to, to get the pen. What happens from there is a mystery. We'll never know, but uh, he didn't come back. So Okay, so no so left. the pen theory is the one you elevator pitched me. Perfect. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. I, I think I've made a very compelling case. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> Give me yeah. your 30. Want me to write that down for you? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to if you were Spooner. Exactly. All right. Let's hear what you got, Getsy, for me. Let's hear your elevator. Why you think it's the... He can't He can't beat the fucking pen. I, I, I can't, but I had a follow-up question. What, what was this thing's anchor like and, and where was was that like normally like rolled up and like still on the ship or did someone put the anchor down and this thing just like fucking it was an anchor down anchor was up on the ship yeah no this ship was 100 percent boarded by pirates or another ship and i don't know if it was the guy who actually brought it back who got his one-fifth payment or if someone else like sold it to him but that's my and I, they probably were going after the pens on the ship so we're guess. gonna go with the barrels were filled with uh, new ball points. I, 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 we could, like RJ, are you ready to tell her that? Because you're the one that's informer. Tell her. Oh, barrels yeah. nine barrels were filled with brand new ballpoint pens. Nobody knew. Yeah. Everyone died trying to get the pen. <laughs> when there was nine barrels under, and then more host the irony at the end. I killed everyone on this ship, and he just pours all the pens over the edge. With the rest of them, yeah. <laughs> and then jumps into his face. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Twilight yeah, Zone exactly. episode. Yeah. <laughs> there were pens now. Nine barrels of pens the whole time. There's nine people died for each barrel. One man <laughs> died. My baby died for this last barrel of pens. <laughs> oh damn, that's pretty good. She doesn't want to hear from me, RJ, so you can fucking tell her. Hi, men. How are you? Okay, all right. So I think we nailed it. Um, like, out of the park, nailed it. You'll be more than happy with this theory. <laughs> um, so basically, the logbook uh, ended on, on November 25th. And, I mean, the whole ship's abandoned without a note. That's fishy, if you ask me. So uh, what I think is they only brought one pen. It ended up overboard. All right. And then each individual crew member was forced to go overboard to try to find the pen uh, until we got down to the captain who who Richard added this to his credit. Very, very brilliant. Um, When he went down, there's these nine mysterious barrels that were supposed to be filled with alcohol that they had found were empty. Uh, Richard believes they were all full of pens. So in a fit of madness uh, and an ironic rage, he threw the pens overboard before tossing himself overboard. Um, and you got to imagine this guy tossed his own baby overboard to try to retrieve the one pen. So there were pens know, here the whole time. Pretty tragic. The irony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and in case we did not fully understand and the, the, the mystery was find someone to marry Celeste. We, we decided, have you tried Bumble? I have tried Bumble. Thank so you for asking. We covered all the bases is, is what we're saying. Honestly, I don't see a single flaw in it. I'm truly impressed. Tinder works. I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. No note, really. You know, I really don't say it enough. RJ, you're my favorite. Oh, uh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, thanks. That's the first time I heard that. I'm going to, I'm going to, since I'm editing this now, I'm taking your, I'm taking my voice to Shrek Richard. You're my favorite. Uh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. I just.
just watch Private Dicks and I think RJ is the funniest. What? Come on! Hi, I'm Celeste. Hi, I'm Richard. Hey, I'm Christy. And I'm Tally. We're the hosts of Unethical Podcast. Every episode, we take a humorous dive into a case study that poses an ethical question. Like, should mentally ill murderers ever be released? No. We discuss what the outcomes of these cases are and what they should be with a unique guest host every episode. Richard needs some more testosterone around here. Nah, I think it's mostly coming from Celeste. Girls are mean. Our podcast is no holds barred, true crime, comedy, adult content, and definitely not for everybody. But, but like most people, most people aren't like can handle swear words and stuff, right? Am I right about that? No. No. You can subscribe wherever you eat your podcast to listen. Follow us on Instagram where we post our teasers to guess what's coming next. And join us on Facebook to get involved in the conversation. Welcome to Unethical Podcast.